Hello and welcome to my channel. You know, uh, one thing I really like to do is make my own custom Mego scale figures. Here's an actual Mego scale figure. I also collect those. Um, this is uh, one of the Ghostbuster figures uh, they came out with a while back, I think a couple summers ago. Um, here's a custom that I made. It's a Scooby-Doo Swamp Monster. And then uh, I have a Doctor Who that I, I did, I think it was last, last year, last summer. But you know what? Um, one thing that I've really enjoyed with my hobby is being able to print out different accessories for them. For example, I got the demon dog here from Ghostbusters. I was actually able to, uh, to light up his eye. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but uh, that's one accessory that I, that I put together. Oops. Ah, he won't stay. Let me just pull this guy over here on the side. And then the swamp creature, he's got his sunken boat. Uh, I use that to display uh, my swamp creature. And uh, this was uh, one of my, I wouldn't say one of my first prints, but one of my first large prints. And uh, I think it came out really well. And then finally, the Dalek from Doctor Who. This actually is one that swivels, you know. And I've been really pleased with my printer, the way it's performed. It's really done a fantastic job for just having a base uh, printer. The printer I have is one of those Creality uh, Ender 3 V3 SEs. That's a mouthful, right? And I really enjoy this printer just because um, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, one is it's super easy to use. You know, um, the bed levels for you by itself. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's, the interface is pretty simple as well. It has a little SD card here that you just plug in and, and use. So I've been really happy with my Creality uh, printer. And being a baseline printer, you know, um, it does have some limitations. But I think I've taken care of some of those limitations because I've put together some upgrades that uh, I wanted to share with you today because perhaps you purchased one of these and um, it's just not doing what you wanted it to do anymore or it's, it's kind of like, I guess, feeling its age. So uh, today I'm gonna go over a couple of upgrades that I made on this uh, and maybe it will help you out as well. So I hope you stay tuned. Yeah, uh, one thing that um, I noticed was that my printer, as I began to print higher up on, th on the prints, like they got taller, um, I was getting some, I guess, some layer lines and, you know, sometimes some failed prints and things like that. And I did some reading and uh, apparently these arms need to be uh, like tightened down every once in a while. So I tightened them down. But I also uh, saw that uh, someone had printed up some arms and use those to help support it and keep them uh, sturdy and, and like, uh, you know, solid uh, as they printed. So um, I was just searching online and I found these right here, these UPI uh, support arms, and they have some really cool bracket system. They have a really cool bracket system. The bracket system starts here at the base and it attaches to the printer with a couple of screws. And then there's a couple of brackets up here at the top that also attach with screws. But the really cool feature is that these rods adjust with this really clever like um i don't know, like hook and eye system with with a nut so um let's go ahead and take a look at it on my printer you can see it wasn't that much it was like forty dollars to, to to purchase and the shipping was free so you know for for less than 50 bucks i got some really cool arms let's take a look at them on my printer all right here's a bracket you can see it's nice and solid it comes with these three screws they're a bit a little bit longer than the ones that they replaced but it gives you a really good solid mounting for that uh, eye bolt here. It's really solid. And so um, that's a good support point. And you can see it looks really, it, it matches the rest of the frame uh, perfectly. Just a really cool, um, cool attachment system. Now the bottom support, this is a really solid piece. It's, it's like one solid piece of, I think it's aluminum, maybe steel, I don't know. But it comes with two screws here that attach to your rods. So it also stabilizes those, um, I guess the X rods. I don't know what they're called. You guys these up, yeah. So it's, I don't know. Maybe they are the X or Y rods, I don't know. But anyway, it secures those rods right there. And then you'll notice that um, it also provides a good solid point for uh, putting those little eye nuts there, those little eye um, bolts. And you'll notice that the, the little uh, nuts here I don't think that one's loose enough. I tighten them down. 
But uh, what you do is you just uh, adjust it till it's the, the proper height, and then you just uh, screw that down right there, tighten it up, and you've got a really solid, let me see if I can, got a really solid uh, support for your for your prints. You know, this is really solid. There's there's a wire for my, um, my interrupter, my, uh, I've got a, what do you call it? The uh, filament detector. We'll talk about that next. All right, this next item that I picked up, um, although it's not necessary for, um, I guess, print quality, it can save you some headaches because what this is is a filament detector kit. And uh, once you get it installed on your printer, uh, what it does is it, it determines whether or not you have a filament that's going through it. And if it doesn't detect any filament, what it does is it kind of like shuts down your system. It doesn't really shut it down. It kind of like pauses it so that you can... Um, that you can replace the filament in there. So it can save you a lot of headaches just because, um, you know, if you run out of filament, it's just gonna print air. And there's a couple of reasons you might run out of filament. One is you may not have enough on the spool. Uh, another thing is sometimes if the filament gets older, it might crack and it comes through here and then, uh, you know, it, it stops. Even though you have some on the spool, it's cracked and, and uh, maybe breaks and you, you have a failed print that way as well. So, you know, it was a really inexpensive item for, uh, you know, what it does, I think. It's it just kind of like really necessary. Now, this is uh, pretty easy to install. It comes with a, um, a bracket and uh, all the hardware that you need, including the wiring. The only thing is, is that you have to go into the, uh, the motherboard and plug in the uh, filament detector line there. Um, let me go show you how I have it installed in my system. Now the filament detector, it's just this little box right here. Um, it comes with this uh, support system. And this support system also has a screw there that uh, allows you to mount that, that detector here directly to this, this vertical post. So you get that hardware there. And it has like these little, um, I don't know what they're called, like these little bushings that allow you to have some movement there. So if it does, um, you know, as you're, as the spool runs out or whatever, you know, you can adjust it there. It's not going to, to be rigid. And so that really will help you when you're working on a, a print and maybe you're unsure about how much filament you have left or you want to make sure that you use up all your filament. Because a lot of times I'll have extra filament because I'm afraid that it will run out if I leave it just printing. So sometimes um, I have extra filament on my on my spools and this will this will help reduce some of that waste too. And uh, the, the little cord, you can see I have it here. Let's see, it goes all the way down here, and it disappears into um, the the frame or the chassis of my of my printer. Uh, you just have to connect it to a, a little motherboard uh, slot. It's really simple. It's even labeled filament, and then uh, the instructions I got were spot on. And that little hole right there, you just pop it out. There's like a little plastic there. You just pop that out so that you can run the uh, the wire through. I also saw um, online a video that actually had it running up uh, the support arm, but that was a lot of work. So I just decided to to get some little zip ties and zip it to that nice rod that I've got. So that's the uh, that's the the filament detector. The next item I picked up was a uh, another build plate because my build plate got old and I understand that they get old. When they get old, what happens is they smooth out here and uh, they don't really, uh, you know, the prints don't adhere as well as they could anymore. Um, so, you know, you need to replace these every once in a while. I, I don't know, it, it took me almost a year before I had to replace this, you know, about a year. Uh, this one in particular, you know, 10 bucks. Uh, I think the shipping was free. Um, and right now there's a code, uh, you can get 15% off. But 10 bucks gives you a double-sided uh, build plate. It also gives you a, um, uh, like a metallic, it's like, it's like a magnet um, cover that you glue onto your aluminum base plate. And uh, it's two-sided, so if one side gets kind of like dirty or whatever, or it's unsmooth, you can flip it over and get twice the life out of it. So this is another, uh, I guess, important piece that you're gonna need so that you don't have failed prints. You know, a lot of times what you'll need to do is just adjust something called, um, there's like a Z setting on your on your printer, the Z adjust, adjust. And sometimes that just needs to be, uh, uh, the, the nozzle needs to be closer to the build plate, you know, and there's videos on how to do that. But, um, you know, for plates that uh, aren't sticking anymore, yeah, you definitely need to replace them. Now here's the build plate. 
here's that magnetic piece I was telling you about. My uh, kit came with that as well, so you don't really need to replace it. I, as I after I replace it, I figured I shouldn't have. I should have just probably left it on because that really doesn't matter. What rat matters is the build plate and making sure that you maintain that. Um, there's some sort of coating on there that keeps the the print sticking. You'll notice I've got a little wear here on the side. And you know what happens is, is you get that wear over time and it still sticks, but then eventually what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to flip it over. I'm gonna have to flip it over and use the other side. And once I flip it on and use, over, use the other side, I'll probably order another one just to have it on hand, you know? But uh, yeah, there's the build plate. Really happy with that, what was it, 10 bucks? Really nice purchase. And finally, I went to Creality, their Creality Cloud. This is where they have a lot of their uh, files. And I found this Ender Spool Holder Spacer so I can avoid vibrations. So I'm going to go ahead and get that downloaded. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I, I just wanted to look for something to print. Um, and it follows that same theme I'm going for with the uh, customizing uh, or upgrading my, my printer. So I'm going to go ahead and download this file and print it up just to show you how easy it is to use this particular printer. All right, now that I have it downloaded, you see it right there. Let's take a closer look at it. Looks pretty good. Um, it's really easy to use this printer, as I said before. Uh, to support it right before printing, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this right here. This is the enable support. You click on that and I just go for the normal supports and the standard defaults. I don't really mess with it. And I go to slice plate and there you go, there are the supports. You know, let's see what the tree would look like. Cause I use the tree for larger prints and to save um, the, the filament. Let's see what, oh, that looks pretty cool. Looks like it's actually more filament, but it looks like it might be easier to remove from the uh, from those center holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the tree. And that's just one of the options that they have here, normal or tree. So now that I have this, I'm just going to save it to my, um, to my disc. And to save it, you just come over here to export play slice files and put that on your disc. And once I have it downloaded, I'll uh, insert it into my printer and just start printing. Looks like my print did pretty well. You know, um, I cover the build plate with this uh, Elmer's glue stick, you know, uh, just to make sure it um, adheres properly. So let's go ahead and get this guy off. Now, um, I noticed since I've been using my glue stick, it's great because I don't lose any supports, but it can be difficult to get the print off, which I guess is okay. Now, let me just pop these off. Those are the, um, the tree supports. And you can see they clean up pretty easily. And so there's my print. I'm gonna go ahead and check um, to see if it fits on my spool and uh, that'll be my last kind of upgrade. So oh, my main concern was that this wobble here on the um, on that arm would cause some stress on that interrupter switch. So I'm hoping that this will kind of minimize it. Let's go ahead and get this on. It snaps on just really easily, look at that. Looks pretty good too. And you can see that it's eliminated a lot of that play here in that spool. So. Hopefully that's gonna help my, my interrupter switch. Uh, it was not a big deal to do, it was free. Well, I had to pay a little bit for the uh, PLA material, but pretty much free for that uh, particular upgrade. Well, I just have to say that I'm really pleased with these uh, upgrades that I put on my old machine. You know, after having this thing for about a year uh, and considering getting a new one, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not considering getting a new one anymore. You know, from the bill plates to the support arms, I think I've taken care of everything I need to. Um, but the real superstar here is my my interrupter, my filament interrupter, because uh, this was a feature I didn't know about. I lost power uh, a couple days ago while I was doing a print, and uh, the machine stopped. And I was halfway through the print, and I thought, oh, boy, I've just wasted all that PLA. But when the power came back on, um, my machine had paused the print where the power had gone off and I was able to complete it. So that was one thing uh, that I didn't know about that, that filament uh, interrupter switch, that it would do that. So really glad I got this piece. If you're upgrading your Creality at all, I would suggest this is probably a must, you know? Um, 
Also, that little piece that I printed up for my spool is working out pretty nicely. Uh, I don't get that wobble anymore. I don't know how much it was affecting my prints, but um, you know, it makes me feel a little bit better. I ordered this, this hot end, because I was gonna include it in my, I guess, upgrade kit, but it didn't make the cut. I just received it in the mail, so I may do a future video on this. Uh, I'm pretty happy with my, my hot end as it is, but I thought, you know, if I'm upgrading, I might as well just do everything. So, um, haven't done that yet, but I may soon.